So, <laughs> you are part of the, the street art project and uh, as Lia said, you are the only and real Lubecker. <laughs> yes, so, I am. How, how do you feel about that, of being part of Lubeck? I feel very comfortable with it. I always lived here, my parents lived here, my grandparents and all my ancestors came from here. My father did not come from Lübeck. He, after the war, this is a typical story how it went after the war. My father and his mother and, and his family, they came from Stettin, which is Poland today, and it was the war, and then directly after the war, uh, all the German people who lived in Stettin and in other German cities in the east had to go west. Yeah. They were refugees and they had to go west because from, from the east the Russian uh, soldiers came and this was dangerous and so they came. And many of them uh, landed in, in north German cities like Lübeck because uh, they also remembered a little bit to their own hometowns, mm -hmm. which also were at the Baltic Sea. So mm -hmm. Stettin, where my father came from, looks very much like Lübeck in a way because it is at the Baltic Sea and they have a river and they have these buildings with the red brick stones which is typical for Hanse cities mm -hmm. all around the Baltic Sea. So yeah, they came here. How do I feel? Yes, I feel very rooted here and I love my town and I love to do my ideas and, and, and my culture work for Lübeck to develop or to bring new things to Lübeck. We choose for your build mm -hmm. um, this this image from your parents, mm -hmm. but we wanted to choose one not when they were young, mm -hmm. uh, more when they were yeah. 50, 60, because yeah. we thought it was so tender, this image, when your yeah. dad is around your mom. Yeah. And, yeah. and uh, could you explain us a little bit how was their relation? Their relation, yeah. My father was a very strong person, if, if you see him from the outside. He was very fine inside and, and very sensible, but he was a, a big man. He, he, he ate a lot and he was, had a lot of body and um, he, was, uh, he was a policeman. He was, a, 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 how you say, criminal officer, name was Papa Strauss, oh, yeah. and he was known. And he, he, in the 60s and 70s, he was in the drug department. In the early years, in the 50s and 60s, he was for pornography and, and these things, and alcohol that came from Denmark. In, but then it was not so, so hash and things like that were, were more important things, and he was in the drug department. And, um, this was very interesting. So he had all the time he had to do with young people who sometimes they were at our home. I remember that very well, how, how dealers and, and things from the underground sat at our living room table. I was yeah, that small and they had leather jackets and things were hanging and they had to talk about something. I don't know what, what. but I remember and he was a very honor, a honoriga. He was a man of principles. Yeah, for the neighborhood. He was a very, he was a very and, caring person yeah, yeah, and a person yeah. of, of principles. This is my father. And my mother was more sensitive and a little quiet and, and vorsichtig. And a little bit careful. careful. And a little bit careful person. But you also mentioned that both of your parents were very artistic. Yes, and both, both, were, both were, were artistic. My father was painting and my mother painted painted as well when she was young and in the later days she wrote poems. Interesting is that we lived in a very small home. We had just one room, the kitchen and the bedroom. My mother always sat in the kitchen and wrote and my father sat in the living room and were painting so, so everybody had his own room to have a free mind and, and do his own thing. Maybe you could just say how you feel your parents would see their image on the wall, what they would think. Absolutely sure they would like it, they would love it, because they were so sensitive to the arts and uh, street art would have been a big theme for them. Just because that they did not came from an academic background, so they always were into the uh, like folk art or so unacademic art forms. But the, the real name of, of this project is Anonymous Hero, yeah. because it's si. just that. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how your parents could react about it, but 
for example, uh, my grandma, yeah. uh, she's, uh, uh, Joan has been drawing her quite a lot yeah. around Mallorca and she died last year and she couldn't move for very yeah. so she never saw the draw for real ah, okay. but she saw it a lot in the newspaper ah, okay. and she, she was so happy yeah. to be famous when yeah. she was 82 yeah. Yeah. and she was so surprised yeah. so, and, cool. and she couldn't imagine but I'm, am I in the street? Yeah, 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 yeah. everywhere in Palma. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> she was so good. Cool. <laughs> she was so good. Very nice. It was in another lifetime, one of tall and blood. When blackness was a bit you, the road was full of mud. I came in from the wilderness, a creature void of form. Come in, she said, I'll give you a shelter from the storm. And if I pass this way again, you can rest assured. I always do my best for her, and then I give my word. In a world of steel, I death a man fighting to be warm. Come in, she said, I'll give you a shelter from the storm. Not a word was spoke between us, there was little risk involved. Everything up to that point had been left unresolved. Try imagine a place where it's always safe and warm. Come in, she said, I'll give you a shelter from the storm. But suddenly I turned around and she was standing there with silver bracelets on her wrists and flowers in her hair. She waked up to me so gracefully and took my crown of thorn. Come in, she said, I'll give you a shelter from the storm. Come in, she said, I'll give you 